Screen Zen is a tool that helps you be more intentional with how you spend your time online. In this video, I'm going to walk through the settings I use on Screen Zen to help me limit my social media usage and overall cut down on my screen time. First off, why would you want to do this? There are many obvious benefits to limiting your phone time. You can cultivate a longer attention span, you won't get FOMO or social anxiety because you're not constantly bombarded with what all of your friends are up to. And third, all of the cool kids are doing it, which is obviously the most important one because let's face it, we know you want to be cool. I know all of the cool kids are doing it because anytime I DM them on Instagram, they're like, oh, sorry, like don't have Instagram, didn't see this, like trying to cut down on my screen time. What, and you think that's a lie? Frequently I've found that all I need is a little push in the right direction to keep me on the right track. Screen Zen is frequently that little push and helps prevent me from doom scrolling or just spending too much time on the internet. Okay, let's first start by establishing some rough goals. I tend to pick up my phone whenever I have a free moment. That normally means going to Instagram, but sometimes I'm using random apps like Zillow or YouTube Studio to cure my boredom. I wanna cut down on that and replace my time online with time reading or being present in the moment. With that in mind, you have to remember to play some offense. You can think of Screen Zen as defense, stopping you from getting online. You should also strive to set up systems that help keep you engaged in the real world so you're not tempted by your phone as much. Scheduling game nights with friends, if you have friends, that is. Keeping a book on hand or just starting a new hobby that you really enjoy are all great ways to play offense and stop wasting time on your phone. If you wanna see tips on how to do that effectively, subscribe, I'm gonna be talking about them in future videos. All right, now to Screens and specifically. Since I've used Screens and before, I've reset the app, so it should look exactly the same to you if you're downloading it for the first time as it does to me right now. Hi guys, so fun fact, Screens and was actually just updated, which means that it does not look exactly the same anymore. Everything I talk about in this video still works. They added one feature that essentially just lets you lock all apps or specific apps for specific periods of time. So let's say you wanna study for 45 minutes or two hours or something like that. You can just lock all of the apps right then and there. When I was a student, I would use something similar. So it's really helpful to have Screen Zen um, let you do it in the app right now. Obviously I'm unemployed right now and never gonna work again in my life. So I never have to, but if you're planning on studying at some point, this will be really helpful. I'm about to walk through all of the settings, so if you haven't, download Screen Zen and you can follow along. I'm gonna show you how I use Screen Zen for two specific apps. The first one is Instagram, pretty obvious, and the second one's YouTube Studio. Let's start with Instagram. So opening Screen Zen, I'm gonna go into Groups, and then I'm going to add an app group. This is just gonna be my social media app group, which in this case is only Instagram, so I'm gonna to go to Socials and select Instagram. Then I'll decide how long I want my pause timer to be, this is how long you have to wait before you can open the app. Five seconds is a good enough pause for me. The unlock time is the amount of time per unlock that you get to use on the app. I don't wanna spend large continuous amounts of time on Instagram, so I'm gonna set this to two minutes. I don't wanna spend more than 30 minutes a day on Instagram, so my daily open goal is going to be 15 opens. That means that if I use Instagram the most I can every day, I'll use it 15 times at two minutes each, which is at most 30 minutes. The pause message is the message that's shown when you try to open the app. Is this important is good enough for me. Scheduling can be really helpful because it lets you block specific apps at specific times. For example, you might want to block all social media in the morning after you've woken up or in the evening so you're not using social media before you go to bed. You could also block work apps like email during the weekends just so that you can keep your time free. I'm going to leave this as 24 hours and then not turn on a strict block. This just means that I will be able to check Instagram any time of the day I want, as long as I haven't checked it more than 15 times already. I am going to block it after the daily goal, which means that if I've opened Instagram 15 times already, I can't open Instagram again that day for any reason. After daily screen time is similar, it would just block Instagram if I've hit a certain screen time. Since this is the only app in the group, I'm not going to use this function. Pause alternatives are quite helpful. I'm going to do a breathing pause alternative. This just means that I do a 12 second breathing exercise every time I want to open Instagram. This gives me time to pause, reflect, and think to see if I actually want to open Instagram 
or if I was just a little bit too bored in the moment and I might be able to find something better to do. Some other wonderful pause alternatives are the word guess, which is essentially just Wordle, the step counter, which could be helpful if you're trying to exercise more. It won't let you open specific apps until you've hit a step goal, and the intention reason. With the intentional reason, you can track the reasons why you've decided to open the app and see all of the reasons you've given in the past. I'm going to stick with the breathing exercise because I found that it's the pause alternative that most frequently results in me actually not opening the app. You should play around with these though, because honestly, they're all quite great. I'm not gonna use any of the advanced settings. The one that I've considered using the most is odds that the app unlocks, which essentially doesn't always let you into the app. It randomly decides each time you try to open it if you can get in. I've found that just using the 15 opens is good enough for me. Finally, I'm going to name this app group Instagram, and that's it for Instagram. I can see that if I go to Instagram, it asks me if this is important, and then if I continue, it will send me to the Screens and app, where I'm forced to do a breathing exercise before I want to open the app. If I decide to quit the breathing exercise, it doesn't count as an open, and I'm unable to use Instagram. Now I'm going to add a second group for YouTube Studio. So I'm going to search up YouTube Studio. For YouTube Studio, the basic settings are actually good for me, but I'm just gonna talk through them again really quickly. I want to pause five seconds before I open the app. I want to be able to use it for seven minutes at a time, which essentially just means that I'll have seven minutes every time I open YouTube Studio to respond to the comments that are annoying. I only wanna open it five times a day, which is on the lower side, but I've actually found myself getting quite distracted. For the schedule, I'm always going to block it. I want to block after my daily goal, and I don't need a pause alternative for YouTube Studio. That's it. And now if I check YouTube Studio, I can see that today I've actually already opened YouTube Studio more than my allocated five times, so I won't be able to use it again. In settings, you're able to quickly disable blocking. So if you need to use an app for some specific reason, this is the place to quickly disable blocking so you can get in whenever you need to. You can also lock these settings just so that you're not able to quickly unlock an app if you decide to. I do this just because I find that if I get really bored, I will actually disable blocking and then go use Instagram for 10 minutes or 60 minutes at a time, which obviously isn't helpful. If you have self-control, unlike me, you won't need to do this, but I do lock the settings. I changed the lock settings timer to be 120 seconds which essentially just means that it takes 120 seconds for me to unlock the settings, which would then allow me to disable blocking or change the amount of times I can open an app per day. You wanna be careful with this though, because it gets really annoying if you have to sit there and tap through it just to change one small setting. So you wanna make sure you do it right the first time. I don't use a parental passcode. I don't prevent app uninstall. These could be helpful, but I'm not living with my parents, so I'm not gonna do them. You can hide strict blocked apps, which I also do. This just removes the apps from your home screen whenever you've already hit your daily allotment. That way you can't even try to open them if you want to. I count opens per app, and I do have a warning before the time expires. This is really helpful because if I'm sending a message or responding to a comment, I know that I'm about to run out of time, so I should hurry up and send that message. Everything else I leave at the default setting, and in more, there's some additional tips and tricks on how to cut down on your screen time. Okay, those are all of my tips and tricks for how to set up the Screens End app. Let me know if there's any others or ones that you've been using that I missed, and I hope that some of these work for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you here next week.